Hi, my name is Edwin Falwell, and I'm here today to show you how we can use a sound editing program to edit photos. Yeah, I know. Let's go. In order to do this, we're going to need something to work with. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to find an image to practice on. I'm going to find a picture of a cat, go up here to the Images tab, and then let's change it so that we're only looking for items that have licenses that are appropriate for reuse. Okay, this looks like a nice picture. We're going to right click and choose Save As. And then let's choose a location that's easy to find and give it a name. Once it's downloaded, you'll see it in the bottom left hand corner pop up. Let's go there and choose Show in Finder. Now you can see our image. We're going to choose to open this with Photoshop because we need to make some changes before it's able to be edited in our sound editing program. Now, at this point, you could make changes to the photo, edit things, clean up some colors, do whatever you kind of want with that. But the final and most important step, if we want to edit it uh, using a sound editing program, is that we change the file format. So we're going to go down here to Save As, and we're going to choose under our file type to save this as a TIFF. A TIFF is a special kind of image file in so far as it doesn't have any kind of compression. Uncompressed images mean that they store the data of every pixel as an individual value rather than using some computer trickery in order to make fi smaller file sizes. These are largely outdated now. One change we're going to have to make is to change the pixel order to per color. This is going to give us a lot more control later on. Just dismiss any warnings Photoshop gives us. Go ahead and press OK, and we've successfully saved our file. Now, there's one other type of file format that we can use for this, and that's called a bitmap. A bitmap is another type of uncompressed file, and uh, but it stores its information in a different way. You can go ahead and just choose bitmap and hit save. These options don't really matter. It, you can make changes here, and it'll affect the final result, but not necessarily in a controllable way. OK, now that we've got our files exported, let's go ahead and use Spotlight Search to launch Audacity, the audio editing program that we're going to use to edit these photos. So once it boots up, we're going to want to import our image file into Audacity and tell it to treat it like sound. So we're going to import it as raw data from the import menu. And we're going to go ahead and locate that file, those files that we just created. I put mine in the downloads folder. You'll see that they have different extensions. We're going to choose the TIFF to start with. Go ahead and hit open. And then from here, we've got to make two important changes. In our encoding method, change it to U. Um, what this is, is it's a pretty technical explanation. And you can look it up on your own. Uh, make sure the byte order is a little Indian. It was on by default for me. And now you'll see that you've got the sound. Don't play it. It sounds terrible. It's just loud, screaming nonsense. But it divides up into three separate channels. You get your red, your green, and your blue. And now we can apply audio effects to these to get kind of unpredictable creative results. So in our effects menu, choose an effect. Some of them work really well. Some of them don't work at all. I'm going to add to the red color an echo effect. You can see stuff changed, but we don't really know until we export it what those changes do. Let's apply a couple more effects. Um, here I'm applying a distortion effect. I make some changes to the sliders. These can affect things. You're going to have to play around with it and find out what they do. And finally, uh, to the last color channel, let's apply um, uh, how about a reverse effect. This should give us interesting results. OK, now that we're done uh, making some changes, let's go ahead and export this. And we're going to export this as audio. Not really, but that's what we're going to tell Audacity to think we're doing. So in our file type, uh, is where we need to make a change, let's change it to other uncompressed files. And then we're going to go down here to raw or headerless and change our encoding to match what we imported it as, UAW. You could save this someplace else. Looks like I know we save it to the desktop, so it's a little easier for us to find. And then I delete the raw off the end here. I don't think that's strictly necessary. You can hit cancel here. We don't need to add metadata tags. And I chose not to show this again. So let's open up our picture. Go ahead and navigate to the desktop. And you should see uh, our file there. Let's 
we're going to have to choose to open it with preview. It'll default to Photoshop, and Photoshop cares a lot more about the integrity of the data than preview does. And well, here it is. You can see we've got some really interesting effects here. That blue layer has been shifted and reversed. Um, the red has had all sorts of interesting sorts of effects applied to it. And the different channels are interacting in really interesting ways. Let's compare it to our original photo. And you can see that, um, yeah, there's certainly some glitches that have happened here. How neat is that? Now, different audio effects are going to give you different kinds of visual glitches or different ways that it changes the image. You're going to want to play around with that. There's a lot of experimentation in this. There's no one right way to do this whole process. OK, so let's head back into Audacity. We can clear out that first track, um, the, our TIFF cat image. And let's go ahead and open up that bitmap. And we can see how it kind of gives us a bit of a different visual thing. Now we're going to use the exact same steps to import it. Instead, this time, we're just going to choose to open the bitmap that we saved rather than the TIFF file. Remember, we're changing the encoding to UA in the byte order. We're leaving with Little Indian. Just make sure that's the case. Now, you can see this data looks different. We don't have distinct uh, kind of color channels. And there's these kind of interesting messy data at the beginning and end. We're not going to want to touch that. If we do um, and apply effects to that, you're going to find that the image becomes unopenable. That contains some header data that's important that it remains intact. Otherwise, it won't work right. Now, I'm going to select, make some sub selections of this and apply effects just kind of at random here uh, to the various parts of the image. I'm changing the pitch here. This might give us an interesting effect of part of the image. And let's make a different selection. How about we add a phaser? Phasers are a pretty neat sounding effect, so maybe there'll be a pretty neat looking effect too. OK. And let's go ahead and follow that same exact export procedure. So we're going to export as audio. We're going to leave it now. Our settings saved from last time, but make sure that they say other uncompressed files, raw for the header, and the encoding is UAW. Go ahead and save it. And then let's go back to our file um, browser. And then let's go back to our file browser and go ahead and locate that picture we just saved. I called mine cat2. Go ahead and right click and choose to open that with preview again. Um, there you have it. A totally different and really another really unique effect. This one you can see applies in stripes, and the stripes actually correspond. OK, let's look at some examples of some stuff that other people have made. Um, my coworker and I were kind of learning how to do this, and we made a bunch of different images. This was an edit of a painting, a photograph I took. Uh, this was a bitmap that I edited here, I believe. This is a, another photograph. I think the phaser was applied to give it those kind of unique stripes. Uh, this one was pitch shifted, I believe, and um, gives a really weird rainbow. A whole bunch of different things going on here. Uh, it's a picture of a goat, and it's kind of spooky. And then finally, I think this is a screenshot from a video game that's had a lot of different stuff applied to it. So give it a shot. Try this on your own. It's fun and easy, and you can just kind of mess around with it. I hope you learned something. Thanks.